Hello everyone. Let's make this pleated sleeve dress in CLO 3D. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Bring an avatar from library. Start with the polygon tool and create the pattern. For curve points hold down control key on your keyboard. With edit pattern tool right click on the edge of the pattern and select unfold symmetric editing. Then with transform tool select the pattern and control plus C control plus V to make a copy of the pattern for the back. Adjust its 3D position right click and flip horizontally. Bring the hard trim full grain leather from fabric library and drag it to the fabric one to replace it. Now start sewing with segment sewing tool. Since the patterns are symmetric, you only need to sew one side. You can also move the middle point on the back patterns so the dress looks better on Avatar's body. You can edit the curve points with Edit Curve Points tool. Click on Avatar's body and lower the skin offset so there's less distance between Avatar's body and the patterns. Also, it'll be easier to simulate if you increase the friction amounts. Double click on the fabric and in the property editor window, scroll down a bit, under details, you'll see friction. Increase that as well. Time to simulate. Click on the little arrow in the corner of the 3D window or hit space key on your keyboard. Every time that little arrow turns blue, it means the simulation is on. Now let's draw a line with internal line tool. Hold down CRTL key on your keyboard for the curve points. Now let's draw a line with internal line tool. Hold down control key on your keyboard for the curve points. More editing. Now draw another internal line on the back pattern, then hold down shift key on your keyboard to select multiple internal lines. Right click and select cut and sew. Hold down shift key on your keyboard and select these two edges, right click and select offset as internal line. In the window that pops open put the distance on 2.5 or whatever number that you think seems right and then click on OK. Move this point a little bit and then draw another internal line to connect the point to the segment. Hold down control key on your keyboard for the curve points. You can edit the points and add more with edit curve point tool. Drag and select the points, both of them, right click and select merge to point. Now hold down shift key, select the internal lines on the front and back, right click and cut and sew. Copy the current fabric and lower the opacity to zero. Drag and assign it to the patterns, we don't want to be visible. Make a rectangle. Right click and select split. In the window that pops open select uniform, split and click on OK. Now move the point a little, right click on it and convert it to a curve point. Add a new fabric and assign it to the new pattern. Now split the edges in half as well and move the points closer to each other. While you're moving the points if you hold down shift key you can move it in a particular axis and also if you right click you can choose the distance you want your point to move. Now with transform tool select the pattern, double click on the middle point that you see, to activate the pivot, then make it bigger from the sides. Edit the curve point and make the pattern bigger again. If you have any questions comment them down below. Right click on the edge and split in half. Select the side edges while holding down shift key, right click and select distribute internal line between segments. In the window that pops open, put the number of offsets on 25. Here, I put it on 26 by mistake. I'll fix that later. Now let's fold these internal lines and turn them into pleats. Select pleats fold and click on a side of the sleeve and then again click on the other side to close the arrow. Now in the window that you see put the number of internal lines per pleat on 3. 
Click four times on one of the internal lines to select all of them, right click and select extend slash trim and add point. Now, sew with pleat sewing tool. If you put the number on 25, you can sew the sleeve part exactly to the middle point. Do the same with the back. Adjust the sleeves, 3D position. Freeze the parts that you don't want to move for now. Simulate, space key, right click on the pattern and select, strengthen. You can move the points or the segments with these keys on your keyboard. These will move the points or the segments one centimeter towards the direction that you choose. I made the pattern a little bit smaller. Control plus D for symmetric pattern. Strengthen the pattern and simulate. While the simulation is on, with steam tool, steam the middle points with a cool steam so they become smaller. The shrinkage should be a negative number, but don't go too low. Keep changing the size of the pattern to get what you want. You can also change the shrinkage of the steam to make some parts bigger or smaller. Positive number of steam will make it bigger and the opposite. Right click on the chest pattern and select layer clone over. Hold down shift key and select the edges. Right click and select distribute internal line between segments. Right click and select remove linked editing. After selecting the number of offsets, add the pleats fold and strengthen the pattern and simulate. Control plus D for symmetric pattern. Strengthen the new pattern. Do exactly the same thing to the back patterns, smiley face. Here again, I changed the size of the sleeves and added a little more steam. Make a rectangle. Select the edges and distribute one internal line between the two segments. And sew the sides of it to the sides of the dress. Simulate and adjust its scale if it's too big or too small. To add some pearls, double-click on the default button in the object browser and select the button that looks more like a pearl. Now in its property editor change its thickness and width. For the button to look more round like a pearl, the thickness needs to be around 10 times more than the width of it. With the button tool add the pearl on the internal line. Bring down rectangle's particle distance, and if you can't see the pearl move it on the internal line with the edit button tool. Control plus C, Control plus V, to make a copy of the buttons. Control plus C, Control plus V again to copy and paste these two buttons. After adjusting their position, add a new button and make a smaller pearl by changing its width and thickness in property editor window. Now add the button on the internal line and hit Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V, but this time right click so you can choose the number of copies. Now select all of them and do the same. 
Increase the number of buttons until you see all of the positions become zero. Select all the buttons and turn off collision. Strengthen the pattern. Simulate. Copy and paste the rectangle with Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V and sew it to the dress. Simulate, then select the buttons on the pattern with Edit Button Tool, right-click and select Reset 3D Position. Repeat the process. If you want you can change the rectangles layer from 0 to 1 so the dress stays under the rectangles. Make a copy of the rectangle for the last time, but this time change the buttons. Delete all of the previous buttons and only add the big buttons this time. Repeat the process. Draw an internal line. Hold down Ctrl key on your keyboard for the curve points, and you can edit them with Edit Curve Point tool. Now let's make the crystal buttons. This is just like making the pearl buttons, but we just go lower with the thickness. For this part, you just need to copy the buttons multiple times and change the details of them, so you have various sizes. Then add those buttons on the pattern. Keep changing the width and thickness until you're satisfied with the result. We also need a smaller pearl-shaped button for this part, so don't forget to make that as well. You can change the color of the buttons you make. I sped up this part, because it's basically just adding more buttons and moving them so they look decent, smiley face. For the crystal buttons you need to add a crystal normal map and also change their type to glass. Link to the normal maps image in the description, change the position and also the scale of the normal map so the button looks more like a crystal. If you have any questions comment them down below. Do the same with all of the crystal buttons. Check them from the 3D window to see how the normal map is looking. You can also see how the crystals look in the render view. If you change roughness, metalness, or reflection intensity, you can make the pearls more shiny. You can rename the buttons and make them more organized.
I'm going to add more buttons, but since it's the same process I cut this part out. After adding all the buttons, select them with Edit Button Tool, right-click and select Duplicate to Symmetric Pattern. Turn off all of the buttons collision. If any of the patterns are frozen, right-click on them and unfreeze them. Make a copy of the last fabric and assign it to the rectangles, lower its opacity to zero, and rename it. Unstrengthen the rectangles. Simulate and change some of fabric's details so it stays correctly. Now from library change avatar's pose. You can change the color of the fabrics. You can check the colors from the render view to see if they look good. I didn't record this, but I basically just changed the color of the third fabric and made it white. Now select all of the patterns and lower their particle distance. Simulate. A lot of times the lighting can make a render 100 times better, or even worse. You can try CLO's different lighting presets or make your own lights. Keep in mind that warm lights are often better when you want to present a dress. There's no rule though. Keep trying different lights to see which one works better for your outfit. One of the sleeves is stuck in Avatar's hand. With Select Mesh Box tool, you can select those parts or meshes and pull them out. Simulate. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions comment them down below.